I'm nervous, I don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring, and I don't really have a good joke for the opener. <laughs> Greetings all, welcome to Film Stuffs. I don't have as much funny stuff to talk about today. I thought I would take a day off. Uh, I got so worked up today, I, I'm doing my first midnight show, so I don't know if the lighting looks all different, but I'm recording at midnight. Let's get the news out of the way. The only thing I really got is that Broadway shut down. Times Square, New York City, there won't be any shows until January 2021. There is no more Broadway in 2020. It makes perfect sense. Uh, not only are you sitting in thousand seat theaters, elbow to elbow, uh, but also there's so much crew, there's all the uh, cast, it's a to-do. So good on them, congratulations. I'm sorry if people aren't getting paid. That is something that I hope they figure out. Um, I don't know what the business of Broadway is. I hope that my actor friends are not having a lot of trouble right now because uh, they're making the right choice and staying closed. What does that mean for movie theaters? Right now, nothing. It's just a, it's a sign. We'll see what happens. That's one step closer to movie theaters not opening. Um, that being said, the reason why I'm recording today is because there are movie theaters that are open and they are considering reopening even with AMC pushing their dates back two weeks. I personally know people that are being called upon to get back to work and it's making me very, very angry and it's making me very, very nervous and I don't have a good answer right now. So I'm sorry right now if I had all these great things planned for this video. At some point I will talk about these things. I'm gonna talk about Hollywood's absolute disdain for Netflix and this ultimate, do you wanna call it a streaming war? So far I don't really know what it is. In the last video I made some comments about Parasite winning the Oscar and I wanna get into that. Um, I'm really interested in why Hollywood doesn't want Netflix to win an Oscar. Um, I don't think I'm going to be talking about that today. We'll see how I feel at the end of this. So, independent movie theaters are trying to open up. Um, what I know, it's not fully opening up theaters. It's just opening up part of the theater. Not necessarily to show movies, maybe to sell concession. Try and do something to get some income uh, into the business. This video, I'm probably going to sound like old man shouting at cloud. I am old man shouting at cloud. I am like the most irritating Bill Hicks, George Carlin wannabe right now. I have such utter disdain for the situation that we're in and how it's being handled by those on top. I've never called a senator before today, and I did it today because I don't know what tomorrow looks like. People are trying to open up theaters, and it's so stupid, but it's born from an independent business owner not knowing how to continue their business. Like I told you, the metro is getting shut down. These are stalwarts in our city, and it's either open or and it's scaring me because it's my friends. These are my friends that have to go and figure out their life. And then it's also me. I don't know if I can stay in this city if nothing opens up. So old man yells at cloud. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the greatest open secret. It's not even a secret that the Fed loaned trillions of dollars out to banks the second all this happened. And I have lived through at least two unconscionable bailouts in my lifetime and no one's doing anything for small business owners. And what that's doing is killing my friends and it's killing me. And I'm really, I'm not freaking out just yet, but you can tell that I feel a way about this. I called Senator Duckworth. I said, I'm a Chicago constituent and I don't know how I'm gonna stay here. I may need to leave tomorrow and I wanna stay, but no one's doing anything for us. Business owners are backed into a corner and they have no idea what to do. And right now it's open or die. 
that's what this is right now. It's open or die. We can't figure anything out. You can't figure out a way. I hear rumors of a second stimulus. I'll believe it when I see it. And we can't give local small businesses stimulus, stimuli, stimulies. Can't give them stimuli. So what are uncreative business owners supposed to do? I don't know what tomorrow looks like. It was a very stressful day. I'm tired and I want to work and I wouldn't even mind working at a movie theater, but I can't do it right now. And the fact that people are trying to force friends of mine, man, somebody do something. Where's any kind of leadership? Where's anything? Why aren't the, the banks are silent. The economy hasn't stopped. I got friends that work in banks and have assured me that the economy has not stopped. I'm worrying about rent. I don't know how to stay in a city. I'm watching people outside and everyone, we're all just out. It hasn't stopped. Nothing's stopped. And it hasn't gotten better since I made my first video. And the second I drop that video, I hear theaters are opening and now people very close to me have to deal with this. And the only reason why I'm not dealing with this is because <clears throat> I have no job. Acting like we don't want to work. We don't want to die. For some reason, financial well-being and actual well-being have been absolutely misconstrued. Yeah, if I had more financial well-being, I'd be better off, wouldn't we all? But right now, what is it, 42 million people unemployed? I'll go sit on the phone for 12 hours. I'll do what I have to do to survive. But this is what's happening. This is real life stuff. I'm making these videos so that I can have a record of it. I want a timestamp on this shit. I want to get used to telling things as they're happening because I don't know if I'll be able to do this from Chicago much longer. I don't know how I'm going to have money in the next couple of weeks. And it's stressing me out. So I definitely want to talk about Netflix and I want to talk about the movie theater. You know what the episode was actually going to be today? Was that 2020 was going to be a bunk ass year anyway. We had conversations all last year. 2019 was bunk. 2020 was going to be bunk. And we're all just waiting for a better lineup of movies. And I'll make that video at some point, but I can't do it tonight because I'm just too pissed off. So uh, I may make this a shorter video because I, I would rather do the fun videos than the angry videos or the ones where I'm like crying and peeing my pants and stuff like that. When I'm emotional, it's nice. I, I really want to remember how this feels. I've never done anything like this before. I've been frustrated about this job before, but never... I've been in some situations, but never quite feared for my life as such. And I'm not going to let the people that I love get hurt. So anyone got any ideas? I think I'll call Mitch McConnell tomorrow. Be nice if this other stimulus came through, but 1200 bucks is... It'll keep me going for another couple of weeks. It'll help me move. It would be nice to have any kind of leadership. It's obvious we're not going to get leadership with who we have right now. So someone needs to step up. Someone needs to like pretend to be the boss or something. It can be done. Sometimes if you want a promotion, you just got to start acting like you got the job. Our boy from Vermont was doing really, really well with that. And then when he disappeared, it all just kind of stopped, didn't it? I'm angry. I feel a little better. I feel a little better now. I'll keep bringing this up as it comes along. Like I said, I wasn't expecting to talk about any of this today. And I'll come back next time with something really informative, something really good to sleep to, or just lean in and, and soak it in. But until then, you had to deal with me being Grandpa Simpson. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching this. Uh, a harsher lighting, I kind of like the daylight. Thank you for letting me vent my frustration. I'll be in a better mood next time. 
maybe I won't be. Maybe I'll have something fun like this for next time, but hopefully it'll, I'll be able to shoot it during the day so that the light is a little softer. Special shout out to Jeremiah, Hoopy, Old Tom Hush, and BBF Productions. As always, thank you for your special insight, Hilary Strohshine. Song of the episode is John Lennon's Nobody Loves You When You're Down and Out. It's dedicated to all of my friends on YouTube right now. Listen to it loud. The book of the episode is actually not on the shelf. It is Easy Riders Raging Bulls by Peter Bickland. It's the story of New Hollywood telling the tale of Francis Ford Coppola, Steven Spielberg, Martin Scorsese, George Lucas, Paul Schrader, William Friedkin. That entire time period, it goes from Bonnie and Clyde all the way up to Star Wars and Raging Bull. This book has been disputed. I guess the filmmakers who are involved with it don't necessarily agree with the stories that are in it, but let me tell you why I like this book, and it's twofold. The first reason is because it'll just give you a list of a hundred new movies that you should watch. It's my favorite time period in American film. I love movies from the late 60s through the 70s. I talk about them all the time. I watch them all the time. It's my favorite look. And that book opened me up to a lot of titles that I'd never heard of before. Second, maybe more importantly, it's the first time I read about any of these guys that made them seem like human beings. It may not be true. It may all be bullshit. And, and because he doesn't paint them very well, necessarily. One of them's a womanizer. One of them's a total dork. Most of them are total dorks and most of them are womanizers. To be fair, it's the story of these popular names and faces whose work I grew up with, admire, and it's the reason why I want to be a filmmaker and talk about movies and live in this world. They were always so high up on the mountain. My sin was idolatry. None of them seemed very attainable. This book really paints them as humans, as not the greatest men, but brilliant artists. And I really love that, and I highly, highly suggest this book. The episode's movie is actually a double feature. This is the first time we've ever done this. Probably won't be the last time. Our A feature, Batman Forever, directed by Joel Schumacher, if you need to understand why I put this film in the annals of history. You probably shouldn't be watching this show. Our follow-up feature, our B feature, is Carl Reiner's The Jerk. Um, I have a great time watching both of these movies. The filmmakers are wonderful. We lost them both really recently. And everyone should watch Batman Forever. And everyone should watch The Jerk. All right. Keep watching. I'll be in a better mood next time, maybe. Hopefully... Maybe. Thanks for watching. Remember to check out my feature, Scrapers, a comedy for romantic stoners, on Amazon Prime, and my mini series, Clean Sheets, right here on YouTube. <gasps> what?